Raider Nation, what's going on? This is Raiders Report. Stock up, stock down before their Week 4 game up against the Cleveland Browns. Now, what I wanted to be able to look at here is which players I think are trending in the right direction and which players are trending in the wrong direction. If you've never gotten into investing, if you've never done anything around stocks, guess what? It's going to ebb, it's going to flow, it's going to go up, it's going to go down. This is going to change week to week, but what I like to look at this as like, which players I think are going in that right direction, players that I'm a little bit more confident in right now at this current moment. And if this video does well and you guys enjoy this show, we're going to continue to do this week in and week out. Think of it as almost like winners and losers. First player that I want to bring up that his stock continues to rise, Jackson Powers Johnson. And this was somebody that Antonio Pierce said that he believes that he deserves more time. And quite frankly, it's not that he deserves more time. He deserves all of the time. If JPJ isn't starting and if JPJ does not play every single snap this week against the Cleveland Browns, I'm really going to start genuinely questioning what the hell our coaching staff is looking at, what the hell our coaching staff is doing. Like, you can't just continue to do the same thing over and over and over again. We want to see the rookie. I think it's also it's going to help out our style of running game, especially with Zamir White, if you're going to continue to give him the rock 10 to 12 times a game. But JPJ has been impressing this coaching staff. He impressed me. He impressed a lot of the nation. We got to see more of him this week. Let's go to another player that stock continues to rise this week. It's DJ Glaze. And I believe that he's going to end up being the starting right tackle this week up against the Cleveland Browns, and he's going to get a hell of a test. And if I'm Cleveland, I'll put Miles Garrett, I don't care if he's not 100% healthy, up against the rookie, and you see how it ends up going down. But for Glaze, it's been another person that you can hear AP when he talks about the confidence level in this young man right from the jump this offseason. When Thayer went down, and I think that they're so confident in Glaze's ability to just be able to go in there and get the job done, that they're not going to rush Thayer Munford. Quite frankly, you can make an argument that even 100% healthy Thayer Munford and 100% healthy DJ Glaze, Glaze might be the better player. My point is, this coaching staff believes in him. He's going to get an opportunity to get his first NFL start this week against Cleveland, and I really hope that this young man does a hell of a job because he's a good dude, comes from a good background, and he's got a high future, I believe. Let's go to the next spot here. It's at the running back position, Alexander Madison and... This one's more to do with the fact that Zamir White stock has been going down, and you look at a lot of the All-22 film on Zeus, it doesn't look good. But if the Raiders are going to continue to stick with a zone-blocking scheme, then you got to probably put in your best zone-blocking running back, which is Madison. He hasn't looked great this season. Again, the offensive line hasn't, do him, hasn't done him a lot of favors, but it's also his ability to be able to pass block. It's also his ability to be able to catch the football. And those two things are right now way more important for what our offense needs than you trying to run the ball up against an offensive line that can't block and you pick up one to two yards. I want to see more of Alexander Madison this week. I kind of even want to see a little bit more of Amir Abdullah unless the Raiders want to go with a power running scheme. Then you could see Zamir White fit that mold a little bit more. But this is a question that I have seen circulating around the nation. I've been seeing it on Twitter. I've been seeing it on Instagram. And this is going to be the pinned comment on today's show, which means if you go down to the comment section, the number one question that I have pinned that I want all of y'all to answer because I hope... Zamir White, I hope Alexander Madison, I hope that all of our running backs, I hope our coaching staff see this because this is the part of the game that needs to get better. We got to stop pointing the finger at Aiden O'Connell, Gardner Minshew. The, both of those quarterbacks are going to struggle if our running game does not get going. So who should start at running back? I want to see a three for Zamir White or a 22 for Alexander Madison. I'm going to type 22, and it's because right now, the way that our offense is working, our offense is at its best chucking the rock. Alexander Madison gives you a little bit more versatility in that regard. And until Zamir starts seeing the field better, it's really hard to trust him right now. Let's go to another player, which makes me happy. It's Tyree Wilson. And Wilson, when you turn on the film and you watch him against Carolina... He actually played pretty good. He impressed me against the run. He impressed me against the pass. And in a game right now up against Cleveland where we're going to need Tyree Wilson. Malcolm Coots is done for the year. Max Crosby's dealing with a high ankle sprain. This is a get-right week for Tyree Wilson. This is a week where he could put a lot of the doubters behind him. If you go out there and you ball out at Elysian Stadium, 
in front of your fan base in a week where we need all the edge help we can get up against the team that's ranked dead last in the NFL in terms of sacks allowed this season with 16. The Raiders are blitzing the fourth highest rate in the NFL, and we have the worst pressure rate in the league at 20.4%. The Tyree Wilson stock is going up, and all I'm asking is, is him to continue to do what he's doing, and I hope that that stock continues to rise. Let's go to another player. It's Isaiah Polamau. He's going to be making a start this week for the injured Marcus Epps, another player that was lost doing an ACL, and he's going to be done for the year. But I want to see how Isaiah Paul Mao is used. And one of the things that Antonio Pierce said, he, you know, he talked about business decisions. I hope that they make a good business decision and put Paul Mao at strong safety. I hope they put him at linebacker. I hope they use him as an inside corner. Like, you're not going to be able to just replace Marcus Epps with one dude. You're going to have to use a Nate Hobbs. You're going to have to use Paul Mao. You're going to have to use a Sam Webb. A lot of different faces. But for an undrafted free agent just a few years ago to now getting an NFL start in a monumental game, for this season and for his career. I want to see this young man go out there, do his thing, keep on rocking what he's doing because I'll tell you this, when you watch Isaiah Paul Mal play and when he plays with a lot of confidence, he's a scary dude. I think he's got a really, really bright future in the NFL. Before I go to the players that their stocks are trending in the wrong direction and I hope that they watch this video, they take it upon themselves to go, I'm going to prove that mother effer wrong. I hope that you do, generally. I really do. If you want to get your hands on a salute to service Raiders jersey, go to chatsports.com slash Raiders jerseys, which as soon as you go to that link, you're going to be able to see hundreds of different jerseys. But like, they're the top ones that are on the list. The Max Crosby and also the Bo Jackson salute to service. The sizes, I'll just tell you this right now, are small to 3XL. I will say, I want to say that's the Crosby jersey. that They're already sold out for 3XL. So I'm telling you right now, they're flying off the shelves. I mean, let's be honest. These things are beautiful. I mean, when you look at a lot of the salute to service jerseys, they are silver and black. They're clean. These are some of my favorite ones I've seen. They also have youth jerseys out there. The, the youth jerseys, I want to say, are about $70 cheaper. So if you go to that link, you can get set up here with the Salute to Service jerseys. We're going to be doing a lot of Salute to Service stuff uh, during the month of October, which is when you're going to see a lot more of that in the NFL. Let's go to stock down here. Zamir White. He is ranked right now the worst running back in the National Football League, according to PFF. He is ranked 51 out of 51. He's also ranked one of the worst pass-blocking running backs in the National Football League. When I turned on the All-22 film, I couldn't believe what I saw where I couldn't believe how bad Zeus looked on the tape. And I, I, I knew that he wasn't the right fit for the running back for this style of running scheme with the zone blocking scheme with our offensive line, and I get it. The Raiders' run blocking line has been bad. There's no doubt about it. But Zeus also was running with absolutely no vision. He's worried about fumbling the football, which you can clearly see. And if he doesn't get his act together... I'm not going to be surprised if he just flat out loses the running back battle and you're going to start seeing a lot more Alexander Madison. Madison can give you a lot more versatility. Amir Abdullah right now gives me more confidence than Zamir White. But you get one get-right game and he starts running with confidence because the Zamir White I saw the final four games of last season compared to the Zamir White I'm watching right now, it's a totally night and day difference. Let's go to stock down here. It's Cody Whitehair. And I don't know what I got to do to get this guy benched. I, I don't know what... I have to continue to say, but if Cody Whitehair goes out there and he starts, I'm just I'm going to really question what our coaching staff is doing and if they actually know ball or not. You got to put JPJ out there. You got to be able to look yourself in the mirror and go, you know what? It's not smart for me to continue to put this guy out here. He is a black eye on our offensive line, and every single time he trots out there, you can't have a lot of confidence. So I don't want Cody Whitehair to start this week against the Browns, and it's not really anything against him. If, our, if we're going to say just win, baby, commitment to excellence, and you're actually trying to win football games, I don't see how you look at the tape and you go, I can continue to put that guy out there. He is by far the biggest, weakest link that we have on this offensive line. Now, I'll admit, Andre James has probably played worse from what we've expected, but Cody Whitehair is the biggest, weakest link, and I think it's impacting this entire offensive line. Let's go to another one here. I'm going to go with Trevon Merrick, stock down, and this is another player. When I watch the film... I originally, when I made my video about who I thought AP was talking about in the business decision department, I did not have Trevon Merrig in here. And again, I wasn't in that meeting. Nobody knows who AP was talking about. But when you turn on that film, Merrig was making a lot of business decisions, quite frankly. And that was happening earlier on in the game. 
I have a lot of confidence in Merrick. I think Merrick is one of the better safeties in the league, but he has been bad this season, and you just expect a lot more out of him because last season, I think one of the reasons why this defense was as good as what it was, Marcus Epps and Merrick, they were controlling a lot on that back end. Merrick's playing the way that he did back in 2022. Right now, he's ranked 70th out of 75 overall safeties. He needs to pick it up. With Epps being down for the season, Isaiah Polamau, a lot of people are going to be looking at Merrick because Epps was a captain. It's time to get that stock go back up again. Let's go to another player where it's stocked down. It's Jack Jones. I know Jones wasn't thrilled that fans were calling him out on social media because of him taking off plays and this and that. I think Jones is a hell of a player. And quite frankly, if there's one guy that I hope and slash think that this could motivate, I think it's Jack Jones. I've said before, he's one of my favorite players on this team. I think he's a definition of a Raider, and I am very happy that he's a part of this squad. But what you expect out of Jack compared to what he showed on tape last season or last week, it's just simply got to be better, and they're going to be going up against Amari Cooper. I don't. I would imagine Jerry Judy's going to be out there as well, but Cleveland is a physical football team. Yeah, they're very banged up right now, but they're going to go out there, and they're going to try to punch you in the mouth. So, Jack, you got to man up here a little bit. You got to go out there, try to make a tackle. You need to do your thing. The last stock down is Daniel Carlson. He missed a field goal last week against Carolina, coming off of a week where he went four for four and helped the Raiders get a dub up against the Baltimore Ravens. The reason why this stock is down is because we need our kicking game to be, I don't want to say perfect because not, nothing's perfect, but if you're within 50 yards, 55 yards, I expect Daniel Carlson to be able to knock it through. We do not have the offense, and our defense is not good enough right now to be missing field goals, turning the ball over, and giving them good field position because when Carlson missed that field goal last week, Again, it's a big momentum shifter because they know, the Raiders know, they have to be able to get the points. So for the Raiders to win this matchup against Cleveland, I think it's going to come down to field goals. Like, I think it's going to come down to, obviously, you want to be able to convert in the red zone, but both of these teams have been struggling on offense, and it could come down to who's got the better kicker, who can knock through more field goals, just like Daniel Carlson was better than... What's his name? Justin Tucker, week two. That's why the Raiders won that game. That's a monumental swing, and Carlson needs to get better, and I think he would agree with that statement. So if you're not doing anything on Sunday, even if you are doing something on Sunday, I hope you tune into our week four watch party. Browns up against the Las Vegas Raiders. Both teams are going to be one and two. We're going to have an awesome giveaway. The over-under in this one is 37 points. The Raiders are two-point favorites. You better pull up, because if the Raiders win, that stock's going to go up, and we're going to party. If they lose... That stock's going to go down, and it's going to be another rough, rough week amongst the nation.